So as it is a power team huddle, of course, we have uh, our guest speaker, Valérie and Charlene, who will be speaking, but we will be able to ask questions or even share our own insights uh, at the end. Or if you have any question, please uh, do it, like raise your hand and we will um, take your questions, but uh, don't just interrupt them. Um, I think we're good, Valérie. Are you good to start? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah. So you still have people joining? Uh, even if they uh, are joining, we will admit them. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, so excuse everyone. my voice at certain points in time because I've got a a bad cough. <laughs> okay. No, it's all right. I think uh, everyone can hear you and. We hope that it will grow better. Of course, your, your flow will grow better. And yeah, I'll leave the stage to you. Yes, sure, sure. So good morning, uh, everybody. So we are very glad to be with you today and to be sharing with you on the Mauritius budget highlights. So quickly for the agenda. So we are going to have a brief introduction about Axelia. And for the budget highlights, we'll be covering on the key measures uh, impacting um, SMEs, corporate tax on other taxes. We'll be talking also about personal taxation and about uh, budget measures concerning expatriates. So a quick introduction on um, Axelia. So we are an independent firm of chartered accountants and auditors. So we are specialized in providing services in accounting, tax, internal audit and advisory. So we've got more than 30 years of collective experience in these respective fields. And we have a global footprint of service delivery in over 25 countries in more than 30 industries we've been serving. We actually have a current por portfolio of uh, plus 250 clients. And with our DNA of Game Changer, we are here to empower our clients to lead with confidence. So this is who we are. Um, so we thank MBN really for having given Axelia the opportunity to connect with you uh, today. Uh, Charlene and I, we are the co-founders of Axelia. We are also the lead partners and will co-present on today's topic. So in today's session, we'll be happy to share with you on key budget measures, mainly on taxation and incentives that will impact your businesses. So we'll jump directly to uh, the section concerning uh, SMEs. So, for SMEs, the key budget measures, so uh, I think as you may all know, we have a minimum wage which has been increased to 15,000 uh, rupees. We've got also the streamlining of, of occupational permits and reducing the threshold of the salary to 30,000, which is an incentive also um, in these times of labor shortage on the uh, local market. We have a maximum grant provided under the SME support scheme, which has been increased to 250K. It was previously 150K. So it's the whole basket of the five support schemes under SME Mauritius. Uh, we've got the ex extension of the SME interest-free loan scheme and the COVID-19 uh, special support scheme up to June 2024. We've lost... We've lost Excuse me, Valérie, we have lost, I've lost the sharing screen. Okay, just give us a second. I have someone managing the, the screen for me. We'll be back in a few seconds. In the meantime, I just want to say good morning to Ali, Amir and Priya. Thank you for coming to the Power Team Huddle. Good morning, Good morning everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thanks. So I guess in our audience today, we have more uh, SMEs, right? Yes, I think and so, yes. Yes. Okay, great. So that's why we started with the um, with SMEs. Uh, great. Sorry for this. This is the uh, this is what can happen during live sessions. <laughs> uh, 
good. So you can see the screen back, right? Yes, yes, you can. Okay, great. So um, we have also the, under the SME uh, incentives, the write-off of long outstanding loans of more than 20 years and loans of deceased micro-entrepreneurs. And also the extension of the green energy loan scheme to SMEs, you know, for the production of electricity on the rooftop of their buildings, up to a maximum of 1 million. Uh, next one, public uh, contracts. One second. So got an issue with my just give us a second, please. In the meantime, I just want to say good morning to Karin and Cosma. Welcome to the Power Team Huddle. Thanks, Emma. So we're back. We are so sorry for this. We continue with SMEs. So public contracts, you can hear me and see my screen, right? Yes, it's good. Yes, good. So uh, for SMEs, we also have public contracts below 30 million, which is now reserved to micro and small and enterprises. And also uh, micro enterprises will be allowed to bid for contracts of up to 1 million without a minimum turnover requirement, which is a really interesting uh, incentive. And the extension of the DBM loan up to 25 million rupees at a concessional rate of 3.5% per annum. And we have also the SME employment scheme, which has been extended for another year. So here we are talking about the young graduate and the diploma holder scheme for employment with SMEs, and also an increase in the amount and the participation in international affairs um, SME refund scheme by 25% to 250,000. So this is the bulk of the uh, the bulk of the measures for I mean the key measures for the SMEs. So now we'll move to corporate taxation. So under corporate taxation, we have uh, a series of um, deductions which has been introduced through this last budget. So we've got a double deduction granted to companies employing newly recruited women or women who were unemployed for at least a year under the prima emploi. And also a 30, a 300% tax deduction granted to companies employing persons with disabilities, still under the Prima L'Emploi scheme, and a double deduction granted to manufacturing companies in respect of expenditure that will incur market research and product development. This will no longer be restricted to the African market, but will be extended to all markets, but however, it will be limited to companies having an annual turnover of less than 500 million rupees. Um, double deduction on the cost of setting up childcare centers and also double deduction granted to local companies participating in the financing, sponsorship or marketing and distribution of an approved film under the film rebate scheme, which is more intended for theatrical or media streaming release, which will be subject to uh, production being at least 90% in Mauritius. Uh, we've got also the monthly financial assistance, which is currently uh, in place, will be provided to specified uh, enterprises for payment of salary compensation for the year 2023. It will be between 250 to 500 rupees, depending on the sector and profitability of enterprises. And also good news, all outstanding debts under the COVID-19 levy as at uh, January 2023 
inclusive of penalties and interest will be waived. So this will apply to companies who have benefited from the um, DWAS government wage assistance scheme. So um, tax deduction at source, TDS. So this is an important uh, measure. Maybe one thing before I proceed on this is that we want to stress on the point that it is the uh, responsibility of the one who is paying, uh, be the individual or the uh, company paying, to withhold the TDS. So it means that the one issuing you your invoice may have put the full 100% which is due to them, but it's up to you to deduct the TDS. The, the onus and the responsibility remains on the payer, irrespective of what is on the invoice. So uh, this is something you need to, um, to take care of. So extension of TDS on payments made to um, insurance companies, which they make to panel beaters and spray painters for repairs of motor vehicle of policyholders. So the TDS rate is at 3%. And the TDS will have also, you'll have also to deduct TDS on payments to interior decorator and designer at 5%. But TDS will no longer apply on fees now paid to management companies and investment advisors licensed by the Financial Services Commission. So this on TDS. On manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing sector, so there is a maintenance of uh, the following schemes for another year, so for 2024. So on the freight rebate scheme and trade promotion and marketing schemes to facilitate exports by sea and air, and also 50% reduction in export port charges. And also an <clears throat> extension of the investment tax credit to all manufacturing companies for the next three years, and the renewal of the Africa warehousing scheme with regards to exports to Tanzania for a period of three years. On other taxes now, the next section. Um, on the VAT, so as you know, there's removal of VAT on 15 essential products, on medical grade silicon and on all musical instruments. And an extension also, this is important for individuals of VAT exemption to the construction of a purpose-built uh, building for the provision of primary and secondary um, education, reintroduction of the 3 million rupees construction cost cap for VAT refund on residential buildings, so for those who are in the process of building their houses, home or apartments, so this applies to you. In order to be able to benefit from these VAT refunds, the names and addresses of the individuals um, who are not in business, must be listed on invoices issued by VAT registered entities. So this is very important that you, you connect with your contractor to ensure this is done. And also event organizers, for those of you who are in, uh, in the event sector, event organizers are exempt from payment of VAT on accommodation costs incurred for a qualifying event. So we, we are going to have more details for the Finance Act, which will be issued shortly. And um, one of the major major, I don't, I don't know if I will say improvement, but for the MRA it is, is the introduction of the invoicing system. It will mean that the MRA will, uh, you will have to issue your invoices through the MRA portal. This is a measure of control by the fiscal authority. So the MRA will launch a portal to do the pilot test for this electronic billing system, which will be used by, by vendors and ensure invoice or a standard e invoicing uh, format. But this will apply to certain categories of, um, of companies and entities at start. So it's a long haul project and we are going to have uh, further details in the near future. Um, and also I wanted to uh, stress on one point is that you have, uh, for those individuals who are building their residential homes, etc., you have uh, a year, at least a year, I mean a maximum of 12 months after the date of the invoice to claim for the VAT refund on the uh, construction cost. So the next point is on property um, taxes. So there's an existing home ownership uh, scheme, which uh, applies to uh, the acquisition of property, irrespective of the number of properties owned by the beneficiary, where the government refunds 5% of property value up to a maximum of 500,000. 
but all the claims will have to be filed for a notary. So this scheme has been extended up to 30th of June 2024. In fact, it should have been ended by 20th of June 2023, but it has been extended for an additional year. And also a person contracting a secured housing loan with financing institution under the home loan payment uh, scheme. So what is this scheme? It is a 5% refund of loan um, by the government who gives you the refund up to a maximum of 500,000. So the scheme applies to all home loans registered between 1st July 2021 and 30th of June 2023 for the sole purpose of constructing or completing construction of a residence. But it excludes renovation, it excludes refinancing of an existing loan, and it excludes multipurpose loan. So this also um, has been extended until 30th of June 2024. On excise duty, so uh, there's an excise duty rebate which has been introduced on uh, motor vehicles, which has been which was introduced in previous budget but extended up to 30th of June 2024. So for vehicles up to uh, 1,000 cc, it's 55% five, rebate, and for those above, including the double and single space cabin vehicle and van, it's up to 45%. And we have also a negative excise scheme duty of 10% for the purchase of electric vehicles by individuals up to a maximum of 200,000. So this has also been um, extended to 30th of June 2024. So now on the uh, tax arrear settlement scheme, I don't know if some of you are um, do have dues with the MRA, so there's an ex extension of the uh, TAS, which is providing a full waiver of penalties and interest for tax arrears outstanding, be it if you are under assessment under the Income Tax, the VAT Act, the GRE Act. So, uh, but provided that you register for the TAS by 31st of December, 2023, and you have up to the 31st March of 2024 to pay the tax. So you will only have the amount of tax to pay. You won't have the penalties and the interest, which can be a very considerable amount at times. And also the tax is applicable to um, assessments. If you're already now at the ARC level, which is the assessment review committee, or if your case is already at the Supreme Court or uh, under judicial review of the Privy Council. So this is it for, um, for my part, uh, Charlene will now continue with personal taxation in a few seconds. Thank you. Thank you Sorry, very much, Valerie. Sorry, Emma, can I just ask a question, please? Uh, yes. Just, I've got two questions. So number one, for the, for the micro enterprise, not having to show an income of a million rupees, what is the cutoff point for that as a company? What makes you a micro enterprise? Sorry, maybe if we can come to the questions. I I'm taking note of the question and we are going to answer everything at the end of the session. I think it will be okay. more convenient if you're fine with it, right? Okay. And then secondly, if you no, can no, just uh, explain to, if to, you can explain at the it end, the uh, Karin. Uh, Must I write the end. it? No, you can answer it later. Okay, yeah. I'll yeah. just write it. Yeah, <laughs> just give me a second. Just give me a second. Um, Good morning, everyone. Maybe I would suggest that if you have a question, you can drop it in the chat box. Yes, please. So that we can take note, and then at the end, when we have the question and answer session, we'll get back to you. So uh, we will now dig into personal taxation. We will look at, into the key measures uh, regarding personal income tax, which I think will be uh, of interest to you all here. We now have the introduction of a progressive income tax system. This is by far one of the best measures in our opinion, as the introduction of this measure will uh, significantly impact on the tax bill of many taxpayers the coming year. So to recall um, that we already uh, had three rates at which 
individuals were being taxed in as at 30th of June 2023, we were taxed at 10%, 12.5 and 15%, depending on the annual net income of each individual. We now move to a progressive income tax, whereby the tax will be ranging from 0% to 20%. With a progressive income tax system, taxes um, on individuals will be varying at these rates, and this will bring more fairness and equity uh, overall. So now on the next slide, you will be able to see uh, the different rates. We will now in a sense have uh, 11 tax rates from zero to 20%, starting uh, as from the first 390,000 rupees earned by an individual and ending above 2,390,000. So you will, you will see on this table the different tax rates. The tax rate uh, will be as follows. So uh, for the first 390,000, you won't pay any tax. This will be exempted, tax at 0%. For the next 40,000, you'll pay, you'll be taxed at 2%. Next 400, 40,000, you'll be taxed at 4%. Next 60,000, 6%. And the next one, 8%. The next 300,000, you'll be taxed at 10%. The next 300,000, 12, next one, 14 percent, and then it will start at 400,000 will be taxed at 16 percent, and the next 500,000 taxed at 18 percent. Everything above 2,390,000 will be taxed at 20 percent. So this one is a major reform as um, it will definitely impact on your tax bill, but it will also uh, mean that the computation of PAYE, the, the tax that you pay upfront, will be more complex. So it will have to we will have to bring more changes to payroll systems. Coming on solidarity levy, so this is uh, this was not so famous because we were all uh, asking in pre-budget proposal that this measure be waived. So now, um, now that it has been waived, it will mean that Mauritius will be more competitive in terms of tax uh, perspective because we were no longer being so famous for being a low tax jurisdiction because somebody could have been taxed to nearly 40% when this measure is applicable, the solidarity levy. So uh, to recall that the solidarity levy is imposed on individuals earning uh, a levyable income of more than 3 million rupees. So this has now been abolished and um, those who will be affected by this measure will be people earning more than 3 million in an income tax year. So the abolition of this measure will definitely make Mauritius more competitive and be recognized as a low tax jurisdiction. Moving now to uh, expatriates, there have been quite a few measures in the budget speech uh, presented by the minister about the measures which will aim at attracting more foreigners to Mauritius. So we are now targeting investors, retirees and young professionals. Uh, on the occupation permit, you just to recall that we have three types of occupation permit, namely investor, professional and self-employed. So the minister announced in the budget that the monthly basic salary threshold will go down from 60,000 to 30,000 per month. Occupational permit holders will no longer be required to have a bank account here in Mauritius, a local one. Applicants for occupation permit will be granted a business visa of 120 days without the need uh, for them to leave Mauritius to submit an application. There is also the introduction of 18-month international expert training visa. Uh, there is also the el eligibility uh, for a premium visa for medical patients and retirees, as well as up to uh, two accompanying caretakers. Also on the occupation permit uh, aspect, the initial investment required, meaning the 50,000 USD for investors and 35,000 USD for self-employed, this will be waived and you will only have to pr provide evidence that the funds have been transferred within four weeks of the issuance of the permit. Of course, there will be quite uh, some monitoring on this, on this one. 
Young Professional Occupation Permit will be open to all fields of study. There will be also the introduction of free tier system to force track the processing time for work permit. Recruiting companies will be classified by the Economic Development Board and each category will have a specific time frame. The maximum duration of stay of four years, uh, which was on carers, will no more be allowed as uh, they, will have, they, they will be able to work in Mauritius as long as their service uh, is required. New policy framework for employment of domestic migrant workers, meaning maids and babysitters, expected from the Ministry of Labour, Human Resource Development and Training. So we will have more details about this policy later on. The work permit applications uh, will now be made online. There will be a platform doing this. All work permit applications will have to be done on this platform. There will also be the introduction of a what we call a silent consent. Meaning if you don't hear uh, any news on your application within four weeks, the work permit will be deemed to be approved. The ratio of foreign to local employees will be removed uh, in specific sectors. You will no longer have to maintain that ratio uh, regarding the number of employees uh, in the company. Non-citizens on a tourist or business visa will be allowed to apply for a work permit in Mauritius. Now looking at the acquisition of property. So residence permit granted to a retired non-citizen and their family on the acquisition of property in property development scheme project relating to senior living uh, provided that they acquire a property exceeding 200,000 USD and the acquirer should be older than 50 years old. Property acquisition outside existing scheme allowed subject to a payment of an additional registration fee of 10%. So, but the minimum value of the property acquired has to be more than $500,000. The main residence permit holder, not his spouse or children, is allowed to acquire only one property. And lastly, the residence permit granted to a non-citizen and his family upon the acquisition of a property of a minimum price of 375,000 USD under the Sustainable City Scheme. So we, um, we've mentioned the main budget measures uh, regarding corporate tax, SMEs, personal income tax and expatriate. And um, we thank you for your attention. Thank you very much to Valerie and Charlene for their um, uh, explanation about the budgets. So we'll go through the questions. So we have uh, four questions in the chat, but if you have any question that you would like to uh, ask, we would um, appreciate it if you write it in the chat. So we'll go uh, in order. And so the first question by Karine, uh, is what makes a company a micro enterprise? So uh, a micro enterprise is defined as, an, uh, as a company that exceeding 10 million turnover. Good. Good. And we don't know if all of you here um, having an SME or registered with SME in Mauritius, we highly recommend you to do so. You register, you be. We highly encourage you to register, have an SME application done with SME Mauritius so that you can be qualified as uh, an SME. And this will, of course, mean a lot of, you'll have a lot of benefit with this certificate. Valérie, it does not include self-employed. You have to be an LTD or a domestic company. It does not yes. include self-employed. Yeah, you have to be a company. Yeah, that's the, that's the legal structure which will be linked to SMEs, a company. Thank you. And thank you. So the second question, please explain the, more about the TDS. What is TDS? So uh, basically TDS is tax deducted at source. I, I can take you for a simple example where TDS mm -hmm. is applicable. So um, let's say that there's a list of um, service providers which are under the TDS rule. So for example, as accountants, consultants, we will issue an invoice to our client. 
If the invoice is more than 50,000 rupees, it is on, uh, the onus is on the client to retain 5% of it and pay us that amount less than 5%. What the client will do is that they will retain that 5%, they will, sub they will submit it to the MRA, meaning they will pay that tax in advance for us accountant and they will pay the difference to us. So at the end of the financial year, what we will do, we'll ask from our client, just give us a statement of whatever tax you already remitted to the MRA on our behalf. This is what we call tax deducted at source. Then we will use that tax amount already paid and account for it in our income tax return. If we have any tax to pay, we will pay the additional because MRA has already withheld part of it. So we pay the difference. If we don't have anything to pay, no tax at all based on our income tax computation, the MRA will refund the TDS pay to us. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Is it all right, Karine? No, I think I'll need more explanation, but I'll contact you directly, not to worry. Yeah, it's a good Problem. thing to connect with actually, yeah. So uh, next we got Ziyad, and I think he will need to have a coffee connect with Axelia too, because he's asking, sure. <laughs> do you offer payroll services? Sure, yeah, yeah we do handle the payroll uh, side uh, for our clients. So we do the computation of the payroll for the employees. We prepare the pay slips with all the deductions. So our client will get the net pay. Then what we do is that we submit the contribution returns to the MRA on a monthly basis. So one, a month later, we just submit all the contributions to the MRA. And on a yearly basis, we also prepare what we call the return of employees to the MRA. We uh, submit the statement of emoluments to each employee so that they can in turn prepare the income tax return. So our client have to submit to us uh, whatever change there is in a month in the basic salary or any uh, emolument, additional emoluments deduction they have uh, to apply on their employee's pay. So they, they send it to us so we can update any payroll details as and when required. His second question is, does the minimum wage meant that mean that every employer has to pay at least 50,000 rupees to all its employees? Yeah, uh, we are yet to obtain more information about this, but the minimum wage will be applicable as from the 1st of July 2023. So what this will mean is that inclusive of um, the CSG allowance that the government will give, an employee, every employee has to right. get at least 15,000 per month. So but you have to apply for the CSG allowance. Uh, the employees have to do so, so that we can at least get that amount paid from the MRA and together with whatever the employee is paying, this has to be at least 15,000. Thank you. So this question is from Karen from Property Finder. I think it is a home ownership loan. Is it only for motion citizens? Yes, it is only for motion citizens, yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. So the question from Nikki. Okay, hi, I didn't quite see the slide on the property acquisition. What is the difference between the minimum 500,000 USD and the 375,000 USD? Okay, so uh, property uh, acquisition. Yeah, I'll just ask yeah, my colleague to judge uh, this yeah. time. So this one under the fire uh, the property acquisition outside existing scheme allowed subject to a payment of a registration fee of 10%. So the value, so it, it's basically two different scheme. So the first one will be applicable for any property um, valued at 500,000 USD. And the second permit, it's for non-citizen and their family but the minimum purchase price has to be 375. But as, as mentioned earlier, there are two different schemes on this one. The first one, um, very specific to property acquisition, and the second one, it's sustainable city scheme. What do you mean by, uh, Valérie? Uh, the scheme, it's PDS scheme under $5,000, $500,000, and the 375K, a sustainable city scheme, what is it? Uh, our it, it, it is the new, it is the new uh, uh, 
smart cities which yes, are labeled uh, labeled sustainable sustainable normally the sustainable city scheme will relate to the smart city scheme but as mentioned we don't have that much of information uh, on this one it was just mentioned as a measure but we can share we can share with the team uh, once we obtain this information what's the difference between these two and which one is related to which scheme so that you can better understand uh, both both of the schemes Okay, and what about the first point of the acquisition of property, meaning that the resident permit to retire non-citizen and his family on the acquisition of property in PDS project relating to senior lived, living provided, acquisition price exceeds 200 mil dollars, and inquire is older than five. I don't understand what are the difference within the three. I mean, one, the first one is for the, the retired non-citizen with a permit of retired. The second one is for anyone who would like to um, have a property under an occupation permit or with whatever permit and has to buy a property more than 5,000K. And you know the first point on the residence permit it's uh, related to the retired non-citizen so it means that a retired non-citizen coming to with his family coming to live in Mauritius can acquire property in PDS but this project should be related to senior living it cannot be some other type of apartments ah it's you mean uh, it's related uh, to senior uh, living yeah. it's PDS project you don't like to have the the one at uh, at Luca, okay. it's, a, it's a PDS project senior living. So because there are several uh, several projects currently in Mauritius which are dedicated only to the uh, health care and the well-being of seniors, and which are classed under senior living PDS schemes. Shall I just step in here? Nice to this one. Shall I just step in? So the PDS and the Grand Plus Two. Um, and the RES are all based for expats to buy or foreigners. And by spending over 375 US dollars, it means that you actually get your um, residency permit. So if it's the property acquisition side, then it you don't get the residency permit. You can only get it on your um, uh, working permit. So it doesn't give you the ability to be able to stay in the country as long as you live have that property. Does that make Don't sense? No. Okay, I'll, no, I'll send no, no, it to no, you no. on it. I'll send an email to Emma and then she can send the email out. Thank you very much, Karen. So this okay, question, I just thought I'd step in there. This question is from Edwidge. Can you confirm that the fields of study limitation has been waived for young professional occupation permits? We need to come back to you on this one. In principle, yes, but I, I prefer to confirm. Okay, we have to confirm. Yeah. So another question. Uh, I don't know, Emma, uh, yes. for those questions which uh, we are yet to receive uh, details because they are right now debating on the Finance Act. Yeah. How can we uh, move this to the MBN community? Do we send it to you by email? You're going to share? How do you want to do that? You can send so me by email. That we have all the questions answered. You can send me by, by email. We'll yeah, work well, it okay. out. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll get to you once we have more details yeah. on these ones. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is a third question from Karine. Uh, residence permit granted to a non-resident and his family I am assuming this also applies to a woman having the resident permit and her yeah, family. Yeah. Sure, yes, sure, sure, sure. Equal rights for <laughs> women and men in Mauritius. So, okay. This is a question from Rachel. Uh, can you re explain the home loan scheme for first time buyers? The home loan scheme, okay. So it's a, the home loan payment scheme, it's a 5% refund, which is given by the government of Mauritius up to a maximum of 500,000. So now it will depend on how much um, loan you've been taking from the 
uh, from the bank or any other finance uh, institution. But we, what is important to note is that this scheme applies to all home loans registered between 1st July 2021 and 30th of June 2023 for the sole purpose of constructing or completing construction of a residence. But it excludes renovation to your existing house, it excludes refinancing of an existing loan, and it excludes multi-purpose loan. Okay. So it's solely for those loans which have been uh, taken between the 1st July 2021 and the 30th of June of this year for constructing or for completing the construction of a residence. So you have 5% refund of the loan amount from the government, but it is capped to 500,000 uh, in terms of the refund amount. Okay, so this is not a question. This is just Monique telling you, thank you for your excellent talk. And um, she's looking forward to receiving a copy of your presentation, but this, um, I, we need to ask you first. Sure, if sure. We can no problem. Yes. And also, we, all, all, we are also open to all those who want to maybe um, discuss further the, the incentives of the, of the budget, uh, how it uh, affects your, um, your enterprise, how it affects your employees, etc. So we'll be happy to to share with you the copy. You can come down to our yeah. office also or online. So we are open on any option. So we can talk about how to to get to make the best use. In fact, because sometimes you know we have a lot of schemes, like for example the tax holiday scheme. But a lot of person, a lot of companies are not even aware of those schemes and they don't benefit. So uh, we need our clients and our, uh, I mean the business community to benefit from the all the schemes because we pay tax so that we can also get something in return. So it's important that we benefit from all schemes. So uh, if you want to have um, a connect or you want to have a talk with us, we are happy to engage with you. Uh, I will suggest that right. you input uh, your contact details so on which email address you want sure. To, sure. Uh, people sure. to connect. Okay. Just, just, just write the subtitle, email subtitle, uh, Coffee Connect, but please share your login details in the chat so that people can uh, connect with you for a coffee. I um, have I have a, a question about the electric vehicles. Um, is that include the hybrid, the hybrid, les hybrides? Or it's uh, only full electric? Uh, no, it, will, it will have to be a fully electric vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is a, a question from Roshan. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is already answered. Uh, Karine, um, I was under the impression that the minimum wage was uh, 30,000 uh, rupees. Is it different for different industries? And how does this work for people on commission? So um, for the minimum wage, it is now capped at 15,000 rupees meaning when you employ any Mauritian, you'll have to pay him 15,000. Now, when, let's say a foreigner comes to Mauritius and uh, a, an occupational permit as a professional. So this person to be employed in Mauritius, instead of the employer having to pay him 60,000 rupees, as it was previously, the minimum wage went down for professionals under an occupational permit it went down to 30,000 rupees. So it will be the same for, um, for all industries normally. And uh, the distinction has to be made with, for Mauritius 15, for occupational permit and the professional to 30,000. So if somebody um, earns commission, uh, I guess he's not employed. Maybe if we can get um, more, more details about that particular situation, but if somebody is self-employed, this will be something different. But if, if anybody is in employment, the minimum salary has to be 15% for Mauritian or a foreigner 30,000. I hope this replied to your question. Okay, so you're not counting commission as salary, which is different to South Africa. No, it, the person has to be employed. Is there an employer and employee relationship between the person and the company? If yes, yeah, the minimum has to be 15,000 here. Okay, I see Edwidge has also just commented that it's 30,000 for IT professional. Oh, I see you say expats. Okay, but I'm talking about Mauritians. So I'm not talking Mauritian about expats. It has to be 15. 15. 15. Okay, that's the minimum. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you Welcome. for caring, Neta. Welcome. Thank you. So we are just sharing now our um, contact details. If you have any more questions, you can just reach out to us on these numbers and these email addresses. We will be more, more uh, very glad to hear from you. Yes, thank you very much. So I'm just, I think uh, this question has already been answered. It's about the 5% refund on housing loan. Is it exclusively for first time buyers from Zerine? I think, uh, did this question, was it answered? Because we, we talk about- No, 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 uh, it's, not, it's not only for uh, first time uh, buyers. Okay. Okay, so it's not only for first time buyers. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go through the uh, contact details of Axilia. So please, for the email, the title of the email, please do Coffee Connect with Axilia. And you can schedule it on planning at axilia.com or at valerie.mjacob at axilia.com or charlene at cholet at axilia.com. So thank you very much. And you also have your uh, WhatsApp. I think your your company uh, phone number wow, and yes. also okay. your WhatsApp phone number. Please take these uh, contact details if you wish to have a coffee connect with Axelia. And uh, we, we, is... I think we have a, a last question. Maybe if we can quickly answer this from yeah. uh, Ziad. Yeah. If someone works as a freelancer, how does that person submit his PY return to the MRA? So. Um, Individuals who need to submit PY with us need to be registered with the MRA and obtain their tax account number. So this is the first point. If you don't have it, you need to contact the MRA to obtain your tax account number. And also you're asking, does his employer has to share anything with uh, MRA? Yes. In fact, we have to complete the EDF for, I mean, the employee has to complete the EDF for himself on the MRA website. And in fact, the deadline is tomorrow to ensure that the correct PAY is deducted from his salary, if it's applicable. Uh, so to know that as from the 1st July, it will be those which, those persons who are earning an annual salary of less than 390,000 will not have to pay any uh, PAY. But still, if you want to register with the MRA, it uh, can be voluntary. You can also do it, but you're not obliged to. But earning more, you have to submit PYE returns. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Again. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for all the answers. Actually, the second part of the question was in relation with the freelancer itself. I mean, does the employer of that freelancer has to submit anything to the MRA or the freelancer have to take his own responsibility about well, how when, you, <clears throat> when you're talking about a freelancer, what we need to be sure of is what the legal relationship between the freelancer and the employer. If it's an employment contract, the, so if you're an employee of the um, of the company, yes, they will have to get you registered because they have their uh, employer registration number. So you have to submit details of your, um, of your employees with the monthly contribution returns. But if a freelancer is only providing the service provider, it's not an employee, we have to be very cautious and to know the differences between the different status of people working for companies. So if you're a freelancer, so you're issuing an invoice, you're not getting paid as emoluments, you're getting paid for your service. So you have to take care then of your own, um, your own dealings with the MRA. So this has nothing to do. So the person is not then your employer. It is a client to you. So we need to be very clear on the different statuses of persons working for, uh, for companies. And also one thing which should be with, on which we should be very cautious is, you know, when we provide this, this general um, code, which we call uh, management consultancy uh, services, or consultancy services. So all persons who fall under the BRN, if they do have one, be it as a company or be it as an individual under this code, they have to be registered for that. Irrespective of whether you're earning uh, any revenue, there's, not, there's no cap of 6 million rupees for those 
working under the management consultancy. So, so long as you put on your invoice, consult, consultancy, or anything which relates to that, the MRA will, will treat you as being uh, an obligate, you have the obligation <coughs> to register for that. So this is very important. Why well, I'm telling you this because we've got uh, someone who just came to see to see us, but he was not back registered. He was providing, in fact, consultancy um, service. He put this on his invoice. And now the, <coughs> sorry, the MRA is assessing this person under the VAT Act, and he's got million to pay. So we need to be very, very cautious into knowing what are fiscal obligations vis-a-vis -vis the, the authorities. If I can just add a quick thing on this one. Uh, if you are providing consultancy to your clients, you're invoicing the clients, you're getting paid consultancy fees, and you are not a VAT registered person, if you are being assessed, it will mean that MRE can go back to two to three years uh, in time and ask you to pay that amount to them. So you will have to bear 15% in your own fees that you got. So uh, there's no charging back to client. You'll have to bear uh, the 15% back the penalties and the interest. You, you just have to be careful on providing consultancy and ensure that you have the proper uh, registration with the MRE. Yeah. So it, it, in fact, it is any type of intellectual service in fact will be will fall under this category and the MOA will always debate with yeah. you. Whether you call it consultancy or not, they are going to debate. So this is our experience of yes. what we are seeing and there's a lot of assessment also currently being done on individuals. So um, on companies also, but there's a lot of, of on individuals right now. So uh, we need to be to be not, just, not to be cautious, but more to be knowledgeable of what, when we are in business, we need to know what is our uh, fiscal obligations and what are also our legal obligations vis-a-vis -vis the authorities to avoid such uh, surprises, which can cost a lot. Thank Good? You. Yes, thank you very Great. much. Yeah. yeah, feel free to get in touch. We'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Do you have anything to else to say? No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if you have any question, you can ask because uh, there's no more question in the chat. But if you have anything else you want to say or to share about the budget, uh, we can talk about it right now. So if does anyone want but to... But get hold of your, of your tax holiday, guys. So if you do have a company, I mean, for those who are newly registered um, companies, and you maybe you have started or not yet started operations, so get registered with SME Mauritius. And after you obtain your SME certificate, get registered with MRA for the tax holiday. So it's in, in principle, it's over a maximum of uh, four years from date of first operations. And as Valerie mentioned earlier, a quick reminder that the submission of EDF should be done latest tomorrow. Yeah. For all your employees, just remind your employees that they have to submit this to the MRA tomorrow. Thank you. I just I just want to to ask a question because I'm not really knowledgeable in this. Uh, for the SME, if somebody is just self-employed, uh, and just just want to be a solo entrepreneur, but does that person um, does that person can he qualify to for to be an SME to be a micro uh, company? I mean, he does he can this person apply for this uh, permit? I think I'm not sure uh, to be registered uh, as one. I mean, so normally uh, the structure for for you to get an SME certificate to for the application, you have to be uh, in a company. You can be a one person company like. There's only you in the company being the shareholder and the director, but a company will be the structure that will be required for you to qualify. Yeah. And also what we always advise, I mean, so far as it is possible, because in some cases it depends also on the family that the person has for those who are the, um, citizens of Mauritius. But the, um, the main recommendation that we'll give to you is to get... Um, to get yourself a company, to have a, a company limited by, by shares or limited by warranty, depending on your uh, business activity. So as to avoid, you know, any issue with your personal belongings, there's always a lot of risk associated when you operate in your own name. 
So uh, when you have a company, you have the the protection, this corporate, we call this the corporate veil, which uh, protects you, in fact, which protects your, your asset, which protects also your family. So any liabilities or any, um, if there's any client who is shooting you or, or whatever type of things, uh, or even banks, etc., they can't go up to seizing your property. So uh, having a company, it means that the company will bear the risk. The company will be like another person totally separate from you as an as an owner. And then also uh, what's interesting is that you can uh, de derive dividends and dividends are no longer um, are not taxable. There's no limit. There was a limit of 2 million on the taxation of dividends. And there's no, uh, this limit has been uh, removed in the recent budget by the finance minister. So it's, uh, it's also another incentive to, um, to have your business registered as a company rather than operating in your own name. It also adds more credibility when you're talking to your, uh, to your clients and to the business community at large. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, Karen asks question. So what about ex-employees for the EDF? Is it our responsibility? No, no. It's the responsibility is on the employees. So at the start of last year, meaning on the 1st of July 2022, the, all the employees have already submitted their EDF mentioning that they were in employment with X company. So now if the person left, it is um, the responsibility of that person to submit another EDF. If let's say uh, he was employed in another company during the same fiscal year, he will have to submit another EDF. But it's not the, the responsibility of, of the employer. Okay, thank you. So Roshan asks a question. Is that apply to someone providing training services? So uh, normally training services which are MQA approved, HRDC refundable, these are exempt from VAT. Otherwise, any other training has to be uh, valuable, meaning the person, if he's providing other types of training which are not MQA approved, they will have to be registered for that and charge VAT to their clients. Okay. Does anybody else have any question? Nope. I don't think <laughs> nobody's asking, but I'm just, I just want to let you know, uh, Valérie and Charlene, that Edwidge is saying thanks a lot for this presentation. Rachel also said thank you for clarifying with the Crips presentation. Much gratitude. So I just wanted to Welcome. let you Thank know. you. Thank you for sharing with you. So, so with what I think what we'll do is that uh, you all got our details. If you need anything, just shout to us. We will uh, get the questions which were unanswered. Once we get more information from the government, we will just share uh, everything maybe to you, Emma, so that you can share with the members. And uh, most welcome anytime we can have a chat. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So Karine said a great session. Thank you. Roshan, thank you. And Karen, yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, um, Say hi actually, to all our clients who are yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> all our clients here. So actually, we are. Uh, we have ended. I, I assume we are ended very much earlier than expected. We are supposed to end at eleven. So I just want. Uh, I will let Axia share a bit about uh, your company. Whatever you want to share. So like take take like five or ten minutes. Then we I think we can go. <laughs> and uh, do whatever we had to do. So do you want to share anything that you want to share about Axilia or you have a project that you need uh, something like you want to share about? Just uh, let us know. Maybe I would like to just share something about what Valerie mentioned earlier. Um, now that we have so many uh, instances of tax assessment, we've seen so many clients coming to us and uh, we would like just to put more emphasis on the advanta advantages of having a company like a legal structure behind the business. So we have instances whereby uh, people are running businesses on their own personal name as self-employed. And when they are being assessed by the government, because you know, uh, the MRA, they look at assessment different ways. They have their, let's say, they want to assess a pool of uh, individuals now. They can look into companies in different sectors. Now they are really being on self-employed. So when a self-employed is being assessed, 
we've seen clients having to provide so many details, like um, they have to give their personal uh, bank statements to the MRE. Every money that came in their bank account has to be justified. This is very tiring and a lot of work to do because the person have, has to remember like three years back, who gave me money? What did I do with this fund? If I receive money, for example, from one of my family member and I spent it on any expense, if I didn't get receipt, I didn't keep the receipt, this will be considered as taxable income from the MRE point of view because that person is a holder of a business registration card. So you have to be careful. We will highly recommend that people who are still self-employed and dealing their own personal needs, if that is to be considered, to move to a corporate structure. Like then, everything, if, if you have any assessment, the company will be assessed, the company bank statement, you don't have, the MRE won't go in your personal assets and liabilities. This will be highly recommended. I, I think that that is not something we saw recently and we've seen a lot of people moving to more structured businesses like coming out of sole traders, moving to companies. We will highly recommend this because this is, uh, they are quite aggressive on tax assessment uh, recently and the tax bill are, are huge and sometimes not even the, the tax bill, but the moral implication mean that you have to drag this for over a month, dealing with them, explaining, what is this fund? What did I do with this amount and so on? This is this is hectic. And sometimes you'll be surprised with what they consider as a business income. It can be some funds from your mother to purchase something for her, but they will pay with this. And then, you know, if you have not spent the money uh, two to three days later, they will talk, talk about remoteness of uh, expenditure and will treat like for them, the, the, the first point is the rule is that they will treat all income being as taxable income. Then, I, I mean, as business income, which is not true because as a person you're going to live, you're going to spend money at West or family are going to refund you for whatever expenses maybe you've pulled and paid together for dinners or whatever, but they're going to treat it as taxable in income. And then you will have the responsibilities of the taxpayer to prove that it is not a taxable income with documentary uh, evidence. It's not only with explanation. So we've been quite surprised with the um, with what the, with how they're carrying out assessments and what they are uh, treating as taxable income. So really, it's a it's a great encouragement for you to you know go ahead and and get company incorporated instead of dealing on your own name. That's too risky now. And one one thing they even consider they even consider money between transfer money between spouses as being taxable income. So if ever your husband or wife sent you money, you'll have to prove, you'll have to get the bank statement of your husband to prove that, okay, the transfer was done, the marriage certificate, everything that was done after that with that money. So uh, as Valerie mentioned, we, we are encouraging people just to structure their business properly, get the pr proper structure in place so that there, uh, later on, when you have questions from the authorities, you will be able to, to reply and everything is documented. Yeah, we can have, if, you know, if you want to move from the status of solo pointers or um, freelancers, self-employed, those having individual VRNs to companies, we can connect with you and advise also the, the proper structure. Can you be alone? What it means to be alone? What it means to have two shareholders? What it means to have two directors, etc. cetera? Or the different implications. You know, sometimes people are afraid to open companies and not quite legitimate because you don't know what is awaiting you in terms of legal obligations. What does the uh, government expect from you? What does employees expect from you when you are a company? And uh, we are here to dissipate all those fears and to, to answer this question. We'll, we'll be happy to take you on this journey. Thank you very much. Um, I saw, so I saw just Karen said, I think it's sort of a referral for you. So sorry, I have to go. However, I use Axilia and they are brilliant. They also can offer a service, the team sick and leave days. Yeah, what she means is that we can manage um, the sick and local leaves of your company. So we do the leaves management at our end. Yeah. Okay. On top um, of payroll services, yeah. yeah. We, okay. we, we do that and we also, what is uh, interesting is that uh, we saw that it is important for uh, companies, I mean, for businesses at large to understand the legal implications of employment, of having, of having employees. 
So um, sometimes it's not clear. You don't know if someone is coming to you with this request. Do I have to accept, the, accept this request? Or uh, can I give more leaves? Can she take more leaves? You have so many questions which have legal implications. So mm -hmm. as part of our payroll uh, service, we do offer this legal support, which today is very important. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's great to know. So uh, we have a question. Bye, Karen. Uh, have a good day. Bye, Karen. See you soon, Thank Karen. You. And uh, so we have a question from Nikki. Uh, what do you suggest for commission earners also opening a company or separate bank accounts for income and personal use? <coughs> commission earned. So, um, if somebody is earning commission, what we, what we will advise is that uh, if you want to stay as a sole trader and, and do business on your own personal name, it is highly recommended to have a separate business account. Like everything you invest your client, the money should go to that business account. And then whenever, to want, when, whenever you want to draw money from uh, that account to use, you transfer from the business account to your own savings account so that there's no mix between personal and business expenses and income. That's the first thing. But then, yes, of course, we would recommend to move to a company because uh, of all the advantages that are linked to having a, a company. So even a, a, somebody who has uh, as earning only commission can open up a company, invoice the client for the company, get paid for the company, and then withdraw a salary. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. you. Know, uh, why it is important also, if, for example, we, we come back to this thing of assessment, because it has been quite usual these recent days, when you are having an assessment, so if you have one business account, so you are a sole trader, you have a bank account registered in your own name, like for personal, and then you open another bank account for business. From a bank account perspective, it will be two bank accounts, but it's for the same legal person, mm -hmm. which is you. So when the MRA is assessing you, he will ask you for all statements in your name. It will mean a personal bank account for savings and also the business account because there's no separate, there's no legal separation between you and the business entity. Because if you're a company that's separate, it's a separate legal entity, something else. They can't touch and they can't line, I mean, really. They can query that in your own name. So if you are doing business, really, really would, so far as it is possible, like I'm telling you, to open a company, to have a company limited by, by a chance. It's a good protection. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, I think Natalie would love to have a coffee connect with you. I hope you have a <laughs> <Yes. back with laughs> I, I think it's it's a three year conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't find the right way huh, with my with what I'm doing. It's very difficult. I just wrote, yes, wrote the yes. wrote it depends on the nature of the business too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wrote to the MQA to know how to open a training institution. Yeah. Uh, because as a trainer, I can't, uh, well, it's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. I hope <laughs> that with Axia, they will ease up and simplify whatever you have to do. Always. <laughs> Dr. Len has uh, raised his hand. Yes, doctor? I've just been informed on my Zoom that I am liable to penalties because I've been using my, I operate in my own name and the question now I, I like to ask is what I've done in the past how do I wipe that out <laughs> if I'm going <laughs> into the future because they've never no. they've, I, I, it's, it's a bit rather complicated because I'm also working uh, um, full-time for some other not full-time but uh, for, an, for a company and they do all the tax deduction but I'm, I've mixed it up I think with my with my two accounts, so that's uh, how do I handle that? I don't go to Valerie it. and go to Axia, yeah. they will sort it out. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> okay, uh, no, it's always good to separate the two because mm. you might not have been picked up by the MRA for any query or assessment, but it's always mm. good to separate everything. So separate mm. your salary and separate the business income that you earn yeah. uh, in, in another bank account. Then from mm -hmm. there you withdraw and do whatever you want. But if they ask you order, you will have to provide a certified yeah, list I of know, the I know. you have. 
you will still be able to manage, listen, this one is only for business. This one is my own uh, money that I use for my personal household expenses. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And also what I would suggest you is that if you, you, you decide and if there's a constraint and you need to remain as a, a sole trader, as a self-employed with an individual BRN, to keep um, as far as possible and you know for the major expenses, uh, even if it's for personal expenses, to keep the receipts and invoices. So you can prove whatever, what it is. Because sometimes you are, oh, what is this question? I'm, I'm going to the restaurant. Someone has repented me because I've paid for everyone. And then yeah, you have a query from mm -hmm. the MRE. You can be quite surprised with these questions. And it's, uh, it's sometimes quite, um, quite stressful for, for people who are not used to deal with fiscal authorities, etc. And you know, they will come up with a lot of questions, but if everything is uh, supported, like they say, supported by documentary evidence, you, you are able to explain to them, uh, where does this money come from? What did I do with this money? You have the documents. They will normally uh, remove whatever tax they impose on this, but it's okay. lengthy to explain and to go back so many years uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, now thank you. We're used to do, to do that, so for us it's like a, we like to, we like to deal with them. In fact, <laughs> thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that Nikki said okay, thank you, and um, thank you, Nikki, for uh, saying that. Um, do does somebody have any question to ask? Sorry. Yes. Can sorry. I? Yes. Can yes. I please? Okay, so I know why I haven't registered with the SME before because it requires an I an, a NIC number, which I'm assuming is the identity number. Now, as a non Mauritian, it doesn't accept my passport number, it doesn't accept anything like that. So, what number am I supposed to put in there? So, to register, maybe you can try your NCID. You I've tried NCID. that. It doesn't accept it. It's not working. <laughs> you can talk to yeah. So, uh, Karim, you want to register what? As an individual or want to register your company with SME Mauritius? No, as, as, the company, as the, the company. As the company. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe it's just for the login. Just send me an email. I'll help you with this one. Oh, thank you. Thank you so Welcome. much. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Does anybody else have a question? Is everybody enjoying it? <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, thank you for the question. Everybody was, uh, it was a lively session. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, I, I, I think that because of nobody is telling me anybody anything, so I, I assume that you have, or any question that you have, you will maybe have a Coffee Connect with Axilla. I really encourage it to have a Coffee mm. Connect if you want to have more um, details. And I think. For me, I, I I really appreciate you, uh, Valerie and Charlene, to answer my question about self-employed and the um, importance I think of separating uh, between being a business and mm -hmm. uh, being a self-employed. I didn't know that, but uh, I re I'm thankful to to learn about it. I'm not sure, maybe I will use it <laughs> soon. So thank you very much. I just want to say that Kumar said. Um, Oops, oh, wait, wait a minute. So thanks a lot, guys. I have learned a lot today. So Kamas is saying that. Mm -hmm. And Nikki is saying, thank you, Nikki. So you have done a great job, Emma. It was a good session. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Nikki. And uh, have a nice day. And mm -hmm. Natalie said, thank you very much. As always, Axelia is the best cabinet. Good. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for being our best supporter. <laughs> really, really, I recommend, really, uh, we started three or four years ago, I don't remember, uh, at the beginning of MBN, actually, and they are really, really helpful uh, for non-residents, sole entrepreneurs, self-employed and everything. Really, I encourage you to go through Axia because it's the only cabinet that knows about self-employed and, and, and foreigners, and it's very, very important. So uh, I recommend. Thank you. 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 Thank
them thank to you. you. Very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, thank you so much. Much. Okay. I just have a question. Uh, question. Just yes, just a question. Sure. Yes. Um, is is there any limit before someone should should charge that? Yes, there is. In fact, the limit is on the turnover, so it's six million. But what we need to uh, note is that there are certain categories of trade which needs to be uh, compulsorily registered for that. So, for example, for us as accountant, we fall under the category management consultancy, which as well, which I was mentioning a bit uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, be it we do one rupee, zero rupee, or a hundred rupees, we've got to be registered for for that. There's the, the limit of turnover doesn't apply to some categories. And there's a list which is available also on the MRA, which is very explicit and available uh, quite readily, ready at hand on the MRA website. Okay. But if you don't fall into this category of trade, then the limit would be on the turnover, which is 6 million for quarterly VAT. And then if you exceed 10 million, it will be monthly VAT returns. He just commented, uh, I think consultants are also like accountants. Yes, consultants, yeah. you will have to be registered for, for that. There is no limit of turnover. So, uh, so as soon as you get uh, registered, I mean, uh, be it your company or you have a BRN from mm -hmm. the register of companies, you have to be registered for, for that. So if you are not uh, yet there, please do it quickly. Because if they come and then say, okay, you have not charged that, and then it's going to be an issue on that one. Need to be registered. And maybe one last thing: if you don't want to be annoyed by the MRA, please file all your returns on, on time. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really fall into the yeah, sample. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have less chance because those who don't file are categorized as non-filers. For them, they have like a pool of of these clients, so uh, they will reach out to them. Yeah. Sooner or later, they will reach out to them yes. for, for queries. Yeah. Okay. And and so remember, so our job as a self-employed or a company's owner is not to be accountant. So please go to an accountant, give them this work, which are not ours. We are we are dealing with clients. We are dealing with uh, looking for them. So this is not the job of the sole entrepreneur or even a, a company. Uh, really, really have an accountant. I, focus, I on your core, focus on mm. your core tasks and let's yeah. Yeah. let uh, others who are professionals in their field do the job for you, administrative and also accounting, etc. Mm. It's like communication. If you're not a communicator, if you're not a marketing man or woman, let let do the specialist. You're not. Mm. Yes, what is the uh, what is the amount you have to file monthly your VAT? Uh, ten million turnover. Ten million. Ten million. Okay. And and you have to ensure that whatever VAT returns you submitted to the MRA in a in a year, the turnover that you eventually declare in your income tax has to be exactly the same. Yeah. Otherwise, they will pull out a difference and then they query you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Amir mm -hmm. say thank you very much. He had to leave uh, because he had another meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve uh, Walker said thank you. Excellent session. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Steve. And have Bye. a nice day ahead. And I just want to say uh, last things before we go. So thank you very much to Valerie and Charlene for their talk. And also yeah, it's really pleasure. all mm -hmm. the questions. And uh, Thank you very much for that. I believe that we will be able to share the recording to other members. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, really, I say it again. I really encourage you to go to Axia to have a coffee connect. If you have any questions about accounting and all their services, go to them. And that's it for me. I don't know if you have any mm -hmm. other questions before we end this session. So I just want mm -hmm. to let you. Yes, yes, Karit. Emma, I have a non-topic related question. Seeing yeah. as I'm coming to Mauritius, um, have you sorted out the dinner thingy that we were going to do with Evelyn for the no. following week? No, no. And <laughs> no, we've not had invites. We've not. Okay. No, I just no. wanted to. Uh, mm. okay. And I'd yes. love to meet all of you in person when I'm there. Um, I will let you know. 
So, Valerie, I'd love to come visit you and actually sit with you and sort this out. No problem. No problem. It will be a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And Edward, I'll definitely see you. The rest of you, hopefully, I'll see you around. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Emily, day. Emily you've done Merci. well. Uh, you've done well, and, and I want to congratulate you for managing the session. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to let you know, remind you, I'm not Denise, I'm Emma. <laughs> I'm not Denise, I'm Emma. But I just want to let you know, Denise, Denise said uh, good morning and she hoped that we have enjoyed the session. And she'll be, be back soon, maybe tomorrow or on Saturday. But thank you very much. Um, so... I will see. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Have a nice week. Bye. 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 Bye.